Something a lot of people don't know is that you can use Affinity Designer for website mockups. But not only because it's really easy to design things, but because you actually have the constraints panel. So today let's go through how to use it and why it's so amazing. All right, so first let's open the constraints panel. So if you don't have it open already, which most people won't, is you head up to view, down to studio, and constraints. So in this panel, you've got two boxes. You've got the outer box that refers to the container of your design, which is also known as the parent. And on the inside, you've got the inner box, which is the object that will be affected, which is also known as the child. So for example, we've got this box here. So if you look at the layer panel here, we've got this text, which is inside this box. Now, in this case, the box would be the parent because it contains the child, which is the text. So the text is the child of the box. Now the box is inside the rectangle. Now because the box is inside the rectangle, the box is the child of the rectangle. And the other way, the rectangle is the parent of the box and the box is the parent of the text. So if you keep that in mind, so if you think of that as whatever is inside something else is the child of what it's inside of, this will become a lot easier. Now there is two ways that we can actually do this. The way I prefer to do this is how it's stacked up here. So we've got our text as a clipping mask in the box. So you can see I can close this and the text disappears if it's outside the box and the box is inside the rectangle again as a clipping mask. So it can't actually go outside the boundaries of the rectangle. The other way you can do this is to group them together like this up here. We have the exact same three objects. So we have the rectangle, the box and the text, but they're stacked one above the other simply in a group. Now using the constraints panel, you can do this both ways. I prefer to do it this way where they're inside of each other. One, because it's easier to track what is the child of what, and also because it just makes my life a little bit easier. But using what we're gonna learn in this video, you can do it both ways. So what this basically means is that now we know that the text is the child of the box, the constraints panel can be used to change how the text reacts when the box is resized. So now if we select this text in the constraints panel, the inner box corresponds to the text and the outer box corresponds to its parent, which in this case is the orange rectangle. Now these arrows correspond to scaling. So right now, if we resize this orange box, you can see the text gets stretched and also gets stretched inwards as well. We don't want that. So if we select this text and if we stop it scaling, this is vertically and this is horizontally. If we stop it scaling completely, it means that when we now scale this box, you'll see that the text will move, but it won't scale. Let's say we only wanted it to scale sideways. So if we select the horizontal, meaning that we want it to scale sideways, if we move the box down, you can see the text doesn't change. If we move it across, you can see now it does change. And then similarly, if we wanted this to only scale vertically, now when we change this box size horizontally, nothing happens, change it vertically and the text does stretch. But in this case, let's make sure it does nothing. So now no matter which way we extend this box, the text stays exactly the same shape. All right, so that's basically how the scaling arrows work. Now on the outside of this, we've got the parent box and here is what are called anchors so again if we select this text so right now we're telling it that we don't want the text to scale vertically or horizontally and now what we can say is we want this text to be anchored to a specific side of the parent so for example if we wanted this to be anchored to the right hand side of this box we'd click that one there what this means is that this text will always stay on the right hand side so now if we extend this box you can see the text constantly follows that right hand side no matter how we scale this. And we can scale this vertically as well, and it makes no difference. It's always on the right-hand side because we've attached it to that side. Now say we wanted it in this top right corner. So if we scale this right now, you can see as we scale down, the text also moves down. We don't want that right now. So we select the text again, and let's anchor it to the top and also the right-hand side. So now when we scale this, go to the right, it follows the right-hand side, go down, and it doesn't move. So now it's attached to the top as well. So you might be able to start to tell that this is really useful things like banners, especially on websites. But before you get there, there are some really cool things that you can use with this. So that's the basics with the scaling arrows and the anchors. So now let's actually use something practical. So here we have ourselves a makeshift banner. So you got a logo here, which we're gonna position there. And we've got a home button and a hamburger. Gotta love those hamburger symbols. Anyway, this is just a regular rectangle, which if you look in the layer panel, we just have the three items stacked inside the rectangle. So you'd position this usually at the top of a web browser. What we would want to do is make sure that this logo would stay on the left-hand side of this banner constantly. So while selecting the logo, we make sure it doesn't want to get scaled 
and we want it to be anchored to the left hand side. So now when we resize this, you can see that the logo doesn't change at all, even if we scale it vertically as well, it doesn't change its size. But you can see that these symbols, because we haven't made any changes to them yet, you can see them stretch. We don't want that. So similarly, if we select both of those, now we don't want them to scale either. So we'll turn them off. And this time we want them to be anchored to the right hand side. So we click that one. So now let's move this rectangle and you can see that this moves and is not changing the children inside, which is really useful. So we can make edits to this rectangle and it not affect what's inside of it. Now let's go one step further. Let's grab the rectangle itself and make sure that this is constantly anchored to the very, very top of the artboard. So if we anchor this to the left, we anchor it to the top and to the right, and we turn off the scaling. If we grab the artboard now, so we're not grabbing the rectangles or anything like that, we're grabbing physically the artboard. If we now move the artboard into a smaller shape, you can see that the rectangle actually responds to that as well. So if we wanted to make something like a website for a phone or a website for an iPad, anything like that, we could change this artboard size and it would correspond and manipulate itself. But wait, let's go even further than that. What's really good with this now, so if we had another artboard and let's say, for example, this is going to be our website desktop mockup, and this is going to be what it's going to look like on an iPhone. If we now copy this, head over to Artboard 2 and just hit paste, it literally pastes exactly where we'd want it to be and is now responding to the artboard. So the constraints actually move over when you copy and paste it into a new artboard. But there's even more. So here's an extra little tip for you. We've got our rectangle here. It does what we need it to do. But if we paste this over to here and we go to our client and the client says, you know what, I want to change the color of this background. All right, we'll change the color of the background. But this one doesn't change. So you'd have to go back and do it all on each one of them. So let's make your life a little bit easier. Let's get rid of that one. Now with this one, if we head over to the symbols and make this rectangle or this banner into a symbol, you can see it pops up in the corner here. And now you can see that it's created a symbol group. If we now give this group the same attributes as this rectangle had. So what did the rectangle have? It had the anchors in the left, top and right. So if we give the symbol anchors in the left, top and right and take off the scaling, if we now copy the symbol over into this new artboard, it'll paste exactly how it should. And in fact, let's make another artboard and let's paste it into that as well. Perfect. So now we've got desktop, phone, iPad. Now our client wants to change the color of this. So now when we change it, they all change together or we wanted to change the burger icon and the home icon. We don't want it to be gray. We want it to be orange. There you go. They all change with it. So because they're symbols now, anything within that symbol will be copied over. So now usually under websites like this, you usually have a picture with some text underneath it. So if we grab a picture and position it where we would usually have it, so something like that. Now we want this picture to also react to our artboard so now when we do this our banner moves but our picture doesn't so if we grab this picture now and right here we've got what's called max fit now what this means is that this image will fit to the maximum area but it can have some drawbacks because it can hide other things so for example if we hit max fit if we now grab our artboard you can see that no matter how big we make this or how small we make it the picture is always visible but as you can see here it covers the banner here and then when we make it smaller you can see it creates this white space at the top and bottom. We don't want those things. So what we can actually do is using this picture, if we anchor it to the top, meaning that it's attached now basically to this banner. Now, when we grab this artboard, we can make this bigger and smaller and it stays in place. So no matter how big the website is or the screen that's using the website or how small it is, whether it's on a phone, the image always stays in the right place. Now you also have minimum fit here as well, which is used to make text visible on items. So for example, so minimum fit is really useful for things like text. So if we grab this text here and turn on minimum fit, now when we move this, you can see that the text resizes itself to always be readable. What we can also do is make sure that this is locked and anchored to the top as well. So it doesn't keep sliding around as much. So if we simulate that on a phone, that's what we'd get. It's a bit of a thin phone. Simulate that on a tablet. That's what we'd get. Simulate it on a desktop. We get something like that. So now because we have set these constraints, we can really see what these mockups can look like on 
different sizes of screens. So now you have all the knowledge to go ahead and make some website mockups that are really easy to edit and resize. Hopefully that makes sense with the constraints panel and how useful it is. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll definitely try and answer them as best as I can. And if you wanna check out any more Affinity Designer tips and tricks videos, check out this video here. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.